Well, so I'm, I'm going to talk about an aspect of, of um, an algebraic aspect of perturbative quantum field theory that's probably beneath the radar for many of you, because the kind of quantum field theory that this talk is about is the tree level gauge theory amplitudes um, and uh, the, the kind of relevant algebraic structures are, are quite elementary. They're just um, Lie polynomials and, and cubic trees. But um, it's, 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 it's so nice, the, the, the proof in this talk and somehow uh, the, the, the subject of this talk which has been explored only really at tree level, uh, doesn't really have any nice, simple proofs in it. So I think it's, it's still worth understanding. Uh, and some of the things in this talk, I think, are, are robust enough that um, they can help uh, point the way to more interesting things at loop level. Uh, so the, the subject of the talk goes back to the KLT relation in the 1980s, which related closed string integrals to sums of disk integrals. So this calligraphic A here is a Veneziano amplitude, which would normally be written as some sort of uh, disk integral, um, you know, Z1 less than Z2, uh, et cetera, um, from zero to one of uh, a multi-valued function, Zij to the uh, minus Sij. If you haven't seen string theory before, then, then don't, don't worry, but, um, uh, there you go. And then uh, immediately after that, people realized that a relation of this kind between a closed string amplitude and uh, two, uh, two disk integrals like this implied by taking the so-called so field me? theory limit of excuse, the string excuse theory. Me. Uh, uh, excuse, excuse me, uh, I, I think no one sees um, the paper the, if you want people to see the paper you're writing on, you need to enable the sound uh, with this device. So it, yeah. will, be, it will be- uh, um, Oh, fine. I, I, I think we got it sorted, sorry. Uh, I think you it's, can also it's pin it. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. I, sorry. I, I think I just managed to pin it for everyone. Sorry for this uh, delay on my part. Um, but I, I understand now everybody can see it clearly. Um, sorry. I, I've also changed my microphone and I hope that this. Um, yeah, everybody said they can see the paper now, so I think we'll be good. Sorry for for that. Is it fine now? Yes, 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 it is. Good. Okay. Um, so all I was saying is that in the eighties, um, uh, string theorists wrote down. They said that a relation like this existed. Amazingly, nobody wrote down a formula. Uh, so th this is a relation which which suggests that there's an inner product between the disk integrals that gives you this closed string integral, uh, which is a very different integral. And nobody wrote down a formula for this SAB until 10 years ago. And nobody really proved that this was correct until very recently. Um, in any case, a relation of this kind at the string theory implies a relation of, of the following kind uh, for field theory tree amplitudes. So if uh, MN here is the gravity uh, N point tree amplitude, uh, then you expect a relation of this form where A Yang Mills here is say the partial amplitude uh, of Yang Mills. And I'm going to, um, if you don't remember the, these sorts of uh, physics terms, then, then also don't worry because everything we need, I will um, uh, bring up in due course. So in 2011, uh, various people, uh, Byron Bohr, Damgard, other people, uh, worked out a formula for SAB here, um, which is in terms of the, which is a function um, with a certain weight of these variables SIJ, which are the Mandelstam variables um, that uh, uh, arise when you, when you compute these amplitudes. So the, the whole point of this talk is to give a very elementary proof of this formula um, for SAB, which, which occurs in, in, in this so-called double copy relation um, because there, there's no, um, uh, th this is a, a reasonably important formula but nobody had really uh, written down a direct path uh, to, to give you this straight from uh, field theory considerations. Um, so 
the, the plan of the talk then is I'm just going to tell you, uh, remind you what a partial amplitude is, um, and then remind you of a few very, very old, you know, 50, 60 year old facts about Lie polynomials. Uh, and then I will explain the proof. So um, hopefully I don't labor the point of this slide too much. Uh, you can compute the angles using Feynman rules. And when you do that, um, you write down Feynman graphs and associated to each graph, uh, you, you have a product of vertex factors. And the only reason I wrote this down is to remind you what the vertex factors look like. So, um, you know, the trivalent vertex factor uh, is associated to an FABC, uh, which is um, uh, a, a structure constant of a Lie algebra, usually SUN. And these lambda A are a basis of the Lie algebra. And there's some invariant traits on the Lie algebra. Um, and then likewise, the quartic vertex in Yang Mills is a sum of three terms. Um, and each term is the product of two structure constants, uh, which you can get by taking a trace of a Lie bracketing of some elements in the Lie algebra uh, with some fourth element of the Lie algebra here. And I've drawn the associated trees. So uh, I can think of, uh, of a Lie bracket, bracketing like this or a Lie monomial like this as a tree. Um, uh, and so I, I, I've drawn the where where you know each each bracket um, is represented in the tree as as a vertex coming together. You see. Uh, okay. So the point of this slide is to remind you that if you were going to be um, uh, you know computing a Yang Mills amplitude for the first time ab initio, what you would actually have to do is write down a lot of terms, uh, and each term. Uh, it corresponds to a cubic tree in some way. You, you first write down the, all the Feynman diagrams, some of which are not cubic trees because they have quartic vertices. Uh, but in the end, you get an expression that looks like this, uh, where this sum is over cubic trees, uh, which um, uh, I'll say something about in a second. Uh, and, and another point to, to emphasize is that for the tree amplitude of almost any gauge theory, you're, you're going to end up with an expansion of this form. So what I'm saying is not specific to Yang Mills. If I start with some other gauge theory, then I, and I take the final rules and I expand the conventional um, expression, then it reorganizes in this form where uh, C gamma here is a color factor associated to a Lie polynomial uh, in the obvious way. So if I have a Lie polynomial uh, one bracket, two bracket, three, like this, then I associate a, a color factor, um, C gamma, by taking the Lie polynomial, uh, the Lie bracketing of the associated elements of the Lie algebra and tracing it with some fourth fixed element. Uh, now I can think of this as a sum of the cubic trees because each Lie polynomial corresponds to a cubic tree. One subtlety is that, um, uh, you know, the, the Lie polynomial corresponds to the cubic tree uh, or the binary tree only up to sign. Um, and so, but the signs are important for me because these C gammas, um, you know, C of minus gamma is equal to minus uh, C gamma. Um, so what I mean by this sum is that for each cubic tree or for each binary tree, I choose one of the two Lie monomials, gamma or minus gamma, um, and, and put it in now, th this is not conventionally how physicists starting uh, with the uh, hadronic physics revolution of the 1960s and then um, the birth of string theory in the 1970s. Uh, this is not how physicists write their amplitudes. The way they write their amplitudes is as a, as a sum over permutations. So uh, they write them as sum over A, where A is a permutation of um, one through to N minus one, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, this coefficient here, uh, AA, is related to that coefficient there by a sum A gamma, uh, C gamma, over all uh, cubic trees, where this A gamma here is plus or minus one. Um, and we'll 
uh, it, there's a natural inner product between permutations and uh, and and Lee monomials, uh, as as I'll explain in a second. But um, uh, the the point of saying all this is that A A here is what is called the partial amplitude. Um, and it's those a a of a's uh, which which appear in the in the KLT uh, field theory KLT relation. Um, so to explain how uh, uh, the properties of of these partial amplitudes, um, uh, I'm just going to say a few things about Lie polynomials. Uh, the, these are such well known facts that uh, hopefully we'll have um, uh, come across them. Uh, at some point uh, in, in, in their various guises. Um, so uh, the, the free Lie algebra, uh, which I'll write Lie of A, um, I can think of as being uh, a subspace of the free associative algebra, if I think of the associative algebra not as an algebra, but as a vector space. Um, and the, the elements of, of Lie of A are the primitives. Um, in the free associative algebra with respect to the shuffle co-product. Um, so uh, that, that anyway is, the, um, uh, is, is probably familiar to, to most of you uh, in some form or another. Um, what this means is that, um, uh, uh, well, I still haven't defined this inner product that I'm using, but uh, there's a, um, an obvious inner product uh, on, uh, on say on the free associative algebra where if I have two uh, words a b in the free monoid on a star on a where a is some set uh, then the inner product is is one if a equals b or zero otherwise uh, and so what uh, what the statement that uh, what this statement means is that if I have some Gamma, which is a, a Lie polynomial, then uh, for any um, two non-empty words a and b, this uh, inner product has to be zero. Um, so that's uh, that's probably called Ries theorem for for many people. Um, and what I'm going to do now is restrict to the setting uh, where. Um, uh, restrict to the subset LA, or the subspace LA inside Lie, um, which I'll call the multilinear um, Lie polynomials. And what I mean by a multilinear Lie polynomial is just, um, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's a Lie polynomial in which uh, for, for each, um, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a Lie polynomial polynomial gamma um, in which no word has repeated letters. So the free Lie algebra has, um, you know, uh, the free Lie algebra on, on some, some integers one, two, three, uh, treating the integers as, as just letters, uh, contains things with repeat Lie monomials with repeated letters like this, uh, but that's um, certainly not what I want uh, because I want to, to be using the correspondence with trees uh, where all of the leaves have distinct labels. So that, that's all I, that's why I'm just introducing this notation L of A. Um, there's, there's nothing um, uh, uh, tricky there. Um, and so then in the context, in that context, Ries theorem, uh, if I think of L of A as a vector space, uh, says that L of A is the orthogonal space of, of the shuffle subspace, shuffle uh, inside W, where W is the uh, free vector space spanned by the uh, words with no repeating letters. Um, and uh, the shuffle subspace is spanned by the expressions A shuffle B, uh, where A and B are not the empty word. Um, and so the dual statement to, to, to this is to say that the, um, the dual the vector space dual of, of uh, L of A is the quotient W by, by shuffles. Um, and this explains uh, some of the 
basic facts that um, are all throughout the physics literature, but are never really um, proved. That's sort of uh, their, their word, their sentence, sentences um, uh, which are given to explain some of these things. Uh, but uh, Reese's theorem implies a, a number of well-known identities that were, were conjectured in the 80s. So um, uh, the, the partial amplitude of, of any, any gauge theory, as I said before, can be written uh, in this form times uh, where the sum here is over some Lee, uh, Lee monomials gamma. Uh, these are uh, some coefficients that come from the specific uh, gauge theory that you're studying. Um, and it, it immediately follows from, from Reese's theorem that, for example, uh, a, uh, the, the partial amplitude um, uh, satisfies this identity, you see, because um, uh, because if I put a, a total shuffle here, A shuffle B into this formula, um, then by Reese's theorem, A shuffle B uh, with gamma is zero. Um, another identity, uh, which, let's see. Oh no, I have it here. Um, so so this, this as a special case has something called the U1 decoupling identity, uh, where I is a letter. Um, and uh, another, another conjectured identity is called the kleist quiff identity, uh, which, which also follows in a, in a nice, simple way from, uh, from Reed's theorem and, and a statement about bases for the Frehley algebra. Um, so uh, you, you, you might have come across an alternative characterization of the Frehley algebra as the image of the, of the um, full bracketing map L. Um, so L takes any word uh, and, and gives you back the Lee monomial, which is a full bracketing, a, a sort of left justified full bracketing of that word. Um, but the, uh, and, and these, these monomials um, are not, uh, uh, every Lee monomial, uh, but the dinkins beck waiver uh, theorem implies that these monomials span the Frehley algebra, or in my restricted case, this, this multilinear um, uh, component. But the, the monomials LA, uh, where A is a word, do not form a basis. They're not linearly independent because, uh, for example, the Jacobi identity means that, um, uh, you know, that that's zero. Um, but you can show that a basis for uh, L of A is given by those monomials, um, uh, full bracketing of A, where the word A begins with its smallest letter um, with respect to some ordering, um, uh, some total ordering of A that you can choose. And then dual to that uh, is the basis uh, where I just choose uh, the words A where again, A begins on, on the smallest letter. Um, and, uh, and, and it turns out that these are dual bases with respect to the, the pairing I described earlier. Um, and then the, the Kleist-Quiff relation uh, follows, uh, follows from that because um, uh, there's a nice explicit formula for, for the comb uh, operation L uh, of, of a word. If I is the first letter of that word, Uh, then the full bracketing of that can be written as uh, sum uh, over BC of B tilde IC, where B tilde is um, minus one times the length of B times the reverse of B. So the, uh, this is the antipode operation on the um, hop, al the hop algebra of words. Um, and then with respect to the pairing, the, the, the adjoint of, of, of this formula tells you that uh, uh, the adjoint of L, so um, uh, the, the adjoint of L, L star, uh, is explicitly given by um, uh, a sum that looks like, like this. 
Um, and this is tantamount to an identity which was uh, widely used in physics without apparently uh, being proved, uh, which is that um, uh, the partial amplitude BIC is equal to uh, minus one to the length of B um, partial amplitude I uh, B, B reverse shuffle C. So this is some sum of partial amplitudes on the right hand side. Um, and you can combine this basis statement with this nice formula uh, for, for the full bracketing to, to give you this sort of identity. Um, so uh, all of that is, is, is supposed to be just saying, uh, uh, reminding you of, of some classical uh, facts um, and explaining that they have an elementary, um, uh, that they were known by physicists in a very elementary form. Uh, uh, and the reason, they, the reason that physicists knew about these identities, even if they wouldn't know really how to um, prove them, is that uh, the physicist is constantly computing with these color factors, uh, which involve total Lie brackets. Um, and so, so now I'm going to uh, explain how you can, um, uh, in a very elementary way, just uh, find the, the KLT matrix that um, uh, was was first uh, uh, written down at least ten years ago, um, and uh, to do that, uh, 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 just let uh, we need just a tiny bit more uh, notation. Just so um, for for a subset I, uh, let uh, little s sub i be the Mandelstam variable associated to I. Um, and so in, uh, you know, for Mandelstam, what that meant was that uh, uh, S sub I was the Lorentz um, norm of the vector uh, that you get by summing over the momenta uh, K sub I inside that subset. And so it's clear from that definition that S sub I has an expansion like this, um, where uh, uh, where you sum over all pairs ij, which which appear in i, um, and I'm assuming here that the the vectors, the momenta ki, are uh, individually null. Um, and then the kinds of functions that uh, so functions of Mandelstam's arise in, in amplitude computation, but the kind of functions that arise are um, are of the form. Uh, uh, the kinds of functions you expect are in the uh, Laurent ring with si uh, sub i as the as the variables, uh, but modulo this relation here. Um, so you don't expect to see functions like one over s12 plus s23 um, because uh, s12 plus s23 is not a um, uh, can't be written as some momentum uh, k squared. Uh, but you do expect to see functions uh, where you have um, one over s one two three, for example, uh, and these satisfy uh, these relations. Uh, and in particular, the the kinds of um, functions that we really expect to see are related to to cubic graphs. Um, and so, right for for some uh, Lie monomial gamma, uh, right s gamma for the product of the the si. Um, where you, you take each, each i which arises as an edge of the corresponding tree. So for example, um, you know, one, two, three, um, is, is, a, is a Lee monomial. Um, uh, actually, it's, it's sort of a too boring one. Um, This is a slightly less boring one. Uh, and the associated tree would be this. And you see that there are, um, there's one, two internal edges, and I'm going to count the root of the tree also as an internal edge. Um, and the associated subsets to, for, the, for these internal edges are um, you know, two, three for that edge, one, two, three for that edge. And then 
uh, one, two, three, four for the root. And so associated to this limonomial is the uh, is the Mandelstam expression S two three S one two three S one two three four, um, and this would be the the product of, of of propagator factors that arise if you were computing the the conventional Feynman uh, contribution um, from a cubic graph like this. Uh, obviously, so so the the propagator contribution would look like one over S gamma. And you would add back some um, i epsilon as well. Um, and then the uh, so with that with that notation for s gamma understood, the um, KLT relation is actually a statement about uh, this object here, which I'm calling T, uh, and um, which I saw in a talk that Mikhail Kapranov gave. Uh, which he didn't prepare, but which he, uh, he for, I don't know how it happened, but he, he stumbled on a room of physicists uh, and had a conversation with a few of them and, um, uh, and gave a talk on the back of it. Um, and this, this object T here is, if you like, a, a sort of prototype um, of the gravity tree amplitude. Uh, it might not look like the gravity tree amplitude, but the reason it's a, pro a prototype is because it has all this, it has the same uh, pole structure, you see, because this is a sum over cubic trees. Again, I take each tree, for each tree I choose either the limonomial gamma or the limonomial minus gamma. Um, and so I, I have, and these uh, one over S gamma factors uh, contain all the singularities of, the, of, of a gravity tree amplitude. It's just this, this numerator, uh, which doesn't look like the tree amplitude. Um, and so, uh, uh, th because this is some object then in LA tensor LA with values in the ring of Mandelstam's. Um, but it turns out that there's a, um, there's some homomorphism from LA to, uh, a space of, of appropriate functions of of um, of Lorentz invariants, uh, such that n tensor n acts on t to give the gravity amplitude. Um, this is something that is not proved to my satisfaction, but is proved to the satisfaction of a number of, uh, uh, so to speak, friends of mine, um, and if. Even even if it's proved, or even if they think it's proved, I think uh, uh, everyone agrees that somehow the uh, that map is not very well understood. Um, but this anyway is the prototype of the um, uh, gravity amplitude, and then the prototype of the Yang Mills amplitude, or 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 the partial amplitudes for any gauge theory, um, are, are these T of A here, because I can think of T as a map from the uh, the uh, dual of the Lee, Lee monomial space, L of A, uh, to L of A, um, just by taking the inner product with one of these factors uh, uh, of T. Um, and so, uh, yes, so, so I, I obtained this map from A to T of A. This here is the prototype of, um, a prototype of the partial amplitude. Uh, and the big claim is that T is invertible. And the inverse of T is essentially um, tantamount to the KLT matrix, or in other words, tantamount to the KLT relation. Um, and so in order to see that T is invertible, uh, there's um, a really charmingly um, simple um, uh, thing that you can, you can show, uh, which is that there's a very natural looking Lie bracket on the uh, dual of the, um, uh, the dual vector space of the multilinear Lie algebra. So uh, here I'm suppressing that I, what I really mean is L of A dual tensor the ring of Mandelstam's. Um, and there's a Lie bracket uh, on L of A dual and you define it inductively in the following way. So if I have letters I and J then the Lie bracket of uh, then the, the braces of i and j is sij times ij. 
Uh, and that might not look symmetric, uh, but remember that um, uh, L, LA dual here is, um, uh, is, is this quotient space by shuffles. So in particular, IJ is equal to minus JI um, in, in LA dual. So, so this is some anti-symmetric bracket uh, and you inductively define it uh, in this way. Um, uh, and you have a, so, so here, if you have a letter, two letters, I and J and two words, A and B, uh, then you can expand it like this. And there's an analogous relation for B. Um, and so an example would be for a word A, uh, the curly bracket of, of A with I is this sum over deconcatenations of the word A, where S I C here is the sum of S I J, where J is a letter that appears in the word C. Um, and so it, it's not obvious that this is a Lie bracket. It's not obvious that this is a bracket you even uh, care about yet. Uh, but the, the reason you care about it is that it satisfies this uh, very nice property, uh, which I put in a box. So T of braces AB is the ordinary Lie bracket of A and B, where T is the, is the map I defined on the previous slide, uh, which goes, uh, uh, which, which is the prototype of, of partial gauge theory amplitudes. Uh, in particular, I can nest this relation. So T of curly one, two, curly two, three, sorry, three, four, uh, is the Lie bracket one, two, is the Lie monomial one, two, three, four. Uh, and more generally, I can write, uh, if, if gamma is a Lie monomial, I can write braces gamma for the uh, expression in the, uh, in, in the dual, which I obtain by writing gamma as a um, nested bracketing of commutators and then replacing every commutator by a, a, a pair of bracy, bra braces instead. Uh, so for example, uh, going from here to here, I can go from there to there by replacing every uh, set of brackets by a set of braces. Uh, and then the claim is that the map which takes a Lie monomial gamma and returns the uh, expression in the dual that you obtain by uh, replacing the brackets with braces, uh, that this turns out to actually define a map from uh, L to its dual. Uh, it's not quite obvious that it defines a map because you don't know that this, the, this curly Lie bracket is a Lie bracket. And so it's not obvious that, um, uh, that, that, that what I've written on the first line is even well-defined, um, uh, but it turns out that it is. The curly braces is a Lie bracket and uh, S is the inverse of T. And it, in one direction, it's easy to see that S is the inverse of T because, um, uh, you know, if, if I take uh, uh, T of S of gamma, that's just T of the uh, uh, gamma with braces in it. But just as I wrote on the previous page, uh, by nesting this, this nice relation, which this bracket satisfies, um, T of that uh, curly gamma gives me back uh, a Lie monomial, gives me back the Lie monomial I started with. Uh, but uh, you can, you can you can go in the, in the other direction as well. Um, and then the, the um, so, so this is the main result. Um, and then uh, an important uh, remark in fact is that the matrix elements of, of this map S are indeed the, um, so on the first page, I, I wrote uh, the, the formula that, that had been um, uh, laboriously arrived at by, by this group. Uh, and the, 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 this formula here uh, turns out to be a formula for the matrix elements of the map that I've just written down. Um, so uh, to, to be 
somewhat precise. So uh, uh, if I if I take uh, the, the the full bracketing with the curly braces of of a word a, uh, then that's some expression in the door. And so I I can write it in a basis, making use of the uh, uh, of this particular basis uh, where I choose some ordering and then I sum over words B such that they begin with their smallest letter. Um, then these here, uh, if I write them SAB, uh, these are the physicists or the, the are the sort of um, conjectured formula um, that I wrote on the on the previous page. Uh, and um, so, so that's the uh, that's the first uh, uh, thing to say, and then the second thing to say about the main results is that uh, it implies the the KLT relation uh, in the following form, um, uh, which is to say that if I write T again, and remember that this is the prototype um, uh, gravity amplitude, it's a sum over all cubic trees like this, uh, then I can write that as a sum over 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 orderings a and b again um, restricting to orderings that begin with the smallest letter um, uh, times times these coefficients s a b um, and so the, and these are the putative uh, yang mills amplitudes um, and so this expression is, is the klt relation and i should say that it's actually slightly stronger than the klt relation as the physicists uh, say it but um, because these involve uh, words of different lengths. So it's um, uh, a slightly different statement, but the, it implies the physicist statement. Um, and Eric's turned his video on, which means that I will stop. Sorry, Hedley, I, I think you, you finished greatly uh, on time. Thank you. Thanks, Hedley, for the talk. Um, so everybody's invited to ask questions. Um, I, I had one which, I mean, first of all, I, I thank you for this very clear presentation. It cleared up a lot of confusion I had from listening to what physicists say sometimes yeah. about these things. Um, but I was wondering all the structure that, that, you, that you exposed here um, in this tree level case. I mean, when I think of loop level, I still have all this Lie algebras, the color structures flying around, uh, and there must be a lot of structure in there. So I'm just curious uh, when you go to loop level, what how much of these kind of structures do you think extend in some form or another? Uh, yes, I think the, the, the key thing is, um, uh, the key insight here is that it's interesting to, to study these um, uh, um, uh, well, I, I should say first that the, the, the Lie algebra, uh, the, the, the Lie, Lie polynomial story immediately goes away at, at, at uh, at further orders in the perturbation series, you don't you don't have um, the, the the color structures don't um, uh, don't correspond to Lie polynomials anymore. Um, but it, I think the this story you'll notice doesn't depend on the specific Lie algebra I'm choosing because I'm I'm just trying to use the uh, the nice word combinatorics uh, properties of Lie polynomials, and there there is an, you could do analogous things at, at loop level. Um, so the main main structure in this story was, uh, if you like, T uh, A B. Um, I haven't written that in this formula, but uh, th these are the are the if you like sum over all gamma, which are compatible with both orderings A and B, um, times one over S gamma, and you can consider an analogous object at at all orders in the in the gauge theory. Um, uh, perturbation series, except that there, what you're doing is, um, uh, and it takes a while to work through. You know, it's it's the old story. You draw quark graphs with, um, uh, you know, ribbon graphs and uh, uh, associated to ribbon graphs, uh, associated fat graphs are surfaces, and associated to the surfaces are, are color structures and so on. Uh, but when you do that, you get uh, T's labeled by marked surfaces. Um, and these two marked surfaces can have, have different topologies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I strongly suspect that if you study these T's enough, uh, you, you should be able to formulate. Nobody's really formulated what this should be, 
uh, at all orders. Uh, so I think the question is, how do you formulate it? And you can study these, uh, which I think is proxy. Yeah, thank you, Hadley. Um, uh, I don't see further questions uh, right at the moment. So, so let's thank Hadley again. <laughs>